Hello and welcome to part four on our series of lectures on sequence detection for a finite state machine. We just finished developing the excitation table, so we're now going to take a look at how to apply those. We're going to derive our D flip-flop state equations. We're going to need two state equations. So each flip-flop will have its own state equation. So if you remember back, I'll show the state transition table. We determined that we need two flip-flops. We need two bits for each state, one flip-flop for each bit. Right? So we'll be developing an equation for our next state output Q0 plus, and another state equation for our output Q1 plus. Right? We need to define then which flip-flops we're going to use before we can derive these equations. So of course, in this example, we're going to use D flip-flops. What we'll do is we're going to add two columns to our state table, one to show the input that should be waiting on D1, and the other one for the D0 flip-flop input right, value. Right. We need to use then the excitation table. In the case of the D flip-flop, the characteristic, well, the excitation tables are derived from the characteristic equation. We're just simply going to use the fact that Q next is equal to D, or we can say the same thing, D is equal to Q next. So here's how we're going to determine our D input values. Here is our state transition table we had before, right? We had then our inputs are the present state values of the flip-flops Q1 and Q0, as well as the input X that comes into our circuit. We said we have next state outputs of Q1 plus and Q0 plus. We also have another circuit output of Z over here. What we need to do is we need to map this Q1 plus, right, whatever then Q1 in the next state needs to be, that input has to be waiting there on D1 for that state transition table. So when this says D input values, right, this is the value of a zero or one that's sitting there waiting on the D flip-flop input to be clocked through to the output on that state transition. With a D flip-flop, it's very easy. D1 is equal to Q1 next. All I've done is I've recopied this same column over here. Q D0 is equal to Q0 next. So all we've done for D0 is copy this column over here. A lot of times with a D flip-flop, you won't see people adding these tables because, sorry, these columns because they know that D1 is going to be equal to Q1 next. D0 is going to be equal to Q0 next. Right, I want to put them in here to be consistent because when we get to J, K, and T, we'll be doing the same thing for that. Right. What we're going to do is we're going to then develop equations for D1. Right? We're going to treat D1 as an output of the circuit. Right? D1 is just simply a reflection of Q1 next. Q1 next is one of our outputs. Right? We map that to what needs to be sitting on the flip-flop input D1 and the flip-flop input D0, which may, may make a little more sense when you see the circuitry developed and drawn. Just go with this method for right now. Right. Well, let's go ahead then and derive an equation. So what I've done is I've shrunk down the state transition table. Here I'm just showing you the inputs, and then this one column of D1, right? D1 is our output. You can think of this as a circuit, right? D1 is a function of the present state input Q1, Q0, and X. Q1, Q0, and X. Right? And the same methods that you've used before of K-maps, Boolean algebra work to derive this equation. In this case, we're looking at the ones. So the ones happen to be then in when our input is 0, 1, 1, which is a 3, a 4, and a 5. And we could map these out. I show a K map here. Then if we minimize this group here of 2, we get the expression of Q1. Q1 is a 1 here. Q0 is a zero on both of these, X drops out, so we get Q1 and with Q0 naught. We're going to or that with this term. Here, Q1 is a zero, Q0 is a one, and X is a one, so Q1 naught, Q0, X. Right. So these are just midterm expressions, right? All we've done is change the name of our inputs from A, B, and C to Q1, Q0, and X. All right. So that's what's going to 
drive the circuitry that we're going to connect to D1. We do the same thing then, and we call these state equations. Right? They're Boolean expressions. We call them state equations. They're for a finite state machine. Right? Let's go ahead then and look at D0. Right, so here's our column D0 from that table. Here are our inputs. Right? We can K-map them. You see, when we K-map them, we can't really reduce anything by grouping any um, pairs that are together. But I'm actually going to write out the canonical expression here. So D0 is a function of input Q1, Q0, and X, right? The sum of 1, 4, and 7. So if we write out that canonical expression, we can reduce this, right? All right, I didn't show the reduction here, right? But if you pull out then here, right, we can end up pulling out x. You pull x from here. We can also pull q0, yeah, x naught. So I leave that as, a, in this case, an exercise for students. You've done that before to minimize that using maybe an XNOR or an XOR gate. I, I think you could probably see if you pull out X, you're going to get the XNOR relationship here. All right, we always want to minimize our circuitry. Right. Now, we also have Z. So we've derived then, we have three outputs. If you think about it, this state table, we have three outputs. We need to derive an equation for D1, an equation for D0, and an equation for Z. Well, Z then, here's Z. We're going to use these as our inputs. So that's where this slide comes from. Here's Z. Now, Z is only dependent on the present state. Right. If we go back here, right, remember Z in a more state machine is only dependent on the present state. It really doesn't matter what X is. If I leave X in there, X is going to fall out right, of that derivation. If I left X in there, because X is both a zero and one, in each one of these, we X would have fallen out of the equation. I simply took the shortcut of not using X in the finite state machine. In this case, this is simple to solve for. Z is a function of Q1 and Q0, a function of the present state. Right? Well, it's a one in state S3, so it's simply Q1 and with Q0. And so now we have our Boolean expressions for D0, D1, and Z. Like I said, here's a slide that says if we leave X in, right, and we do a K-map, you can see that X ends up dropping out. Q1 and Q0. It should because if we've done this right, our output is dependent on the present state only. Now, what does the circuit look like? All right, we've got our inputs. We've got X. Remember, we've got a clock input because we need a clock to drive the flip-flops. I've actually included a reset state. If we want to hit the reset button and reset the output of all of our flip-flops to zero, we can do that. Right, in our equations, we had an X naught that we needed. That's why we've got the X naught here. Let's take a look at the circuitry. The, here's our flip-flop D0. Let's go back to, right, the equation we derived for D0, right, was this long complex, oh, not that complex, equation here, right? If we go back to the circuit, I've just rewritten it here. Q, D0, we said is equal to Q1 and with Q0 naught and with X naught or with, right here I pulled out X out of these terms. I did the Boolean algebra. I said this is X and with Q1, X nor uh, Q0. So here then, if this flip-flop, this D flip-flop, notice I've labeled the wire D0, represents our input D0. In order to get D0, well, here is Q1 X Nord with Q0. That needs to be and with X. There's that AND gate. That needs to be ORed with. So this OR, here's this OR gate. That needs to be ORed with the Q1 and with Q0 naught and with X naught. Right? There's where this circuitry comes from. So now in our circuitry, we have then this series of, sorry, this combination combinational gates. 
out here, this is what drives the input that's waiting here on D0, right? Our output here out of the flip-flop, I named this Q0 to match our state. Because we needed a Q0 naught in some of these equations, then I tapped off this line with a naught gate to form that Q naught signal. Right. Our other flip-flop, D1, well, here's the equation for D1. Right. We said that D1 is equal to Q1 and with Q0 naught, or with Q1 naught and with Q0 and with X. So this flip-flop is D1. Notice then this output pin here, I labeled Q1. I tapped off here with a NOT gate to give us our Q1 NOT that we need as well in the circuitry. That's where this is provided. This input here, this wire labeled D1, right? We need this, this OR gate as a result of this OR. Here, Q1 ended with Q0 NOT. Here's this end relationship. This AND gate then covers this relationship here of Q1 NOT ended with Q0 ended with X or together. That is what is sitting there waiting on D1. So this then is right, the circuitry we need to represent the different states that we have. We also need to draw the circuitry for Z as well. Right? I didn't do that here because what we're going to find out is that in each, no matter what flip-flop we use, Z is going to be equal to Q1 and with Q0. Uh, so we would just need an AND gate with Q1 and Q0 and the output pin Z, which I believe is shown later in the lecture. That's why I'm not showing it here. Just showing then the D flip-flop finite state machine circuit schematic. This represents then, this will then represent that sequence detection, right? If we start flowing through, remember X is going to be a sequence of bits that come through. Right, when X, when the sequence, when we've seen a sequence of one, one, zero, our output Z will be a one. At all other times, our output Z, and Z is dependent on Q0 and Q1, the flip-flop outputs, that output of that circuit will be a zero, right? So this is how we build this circuit with D flip-flops. In the next lecture, we'll actually then go through and create the same circuit with JK flip-flops. All right, thanks for watching.